So we have seen a lot of YouTubers making videos talking about their journey on YouTube and they always make it seem interesting and kind of exciting but you see fewer videos from brand new channels being real about what it's really like to get started in a platform that's so saturated with content. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're Em and Law and we make videos about what it's like to be an identical twin and here we're giving our honest account and insight into what it's like to create a YouTube channel just one month in. So let's talk quickly about why we decided to make our channel in the first place. YouTube is something that we have consumed as viewers for a really long time. I have to say it is my favourite social media platform. Me too. And I think just for a long time we've been thinking about creating content together. We really enjoy editing, we've both had clients that we've edited videos for in the past. Yeah and obviously with the jobs that we do we already kind of do the whole content production side of things. I took media at uni, you did quite a similar course as well didn't you? Yeah. And yeah video editing is something we've always enjoyed. Enjoyed. I think with the both of us being identical twins we mm -hmm. thought that we have quite an interesting platform that people would be curious about viewing. So being Martin girlies that have been in the industry for a while we didn't do things by half so no. when we decided that we wanted to start our channel that was actually the end of last year wasn't it? So it's December 2023 and within a couple of weeks we created a year's content calendar which documents every single video that we want mm. to make for this entire year ahead including filming dates, editing dates, uploading yeah. dates, what kind of shorts we want to produce for each video. So yeah we really didn't do it by halves and we made a plan to consistently post every Sunday every yeah. week and so far we have done that. So the first thing worth mentioning is that we are actually a little bit late filming this video. So it's now in the middle of February but we're taking our stats from the end of January so we can show you guys a an accurate representation of how many views, subscribers, all of that good stuff we had from a month on YouTube. So we got off to a little bit of a slow start didn't we? Mm -hmm. We posted I think it was one video and then a couple of shorts but we didn't realise that the shorts hadn't posted as shorts, they posted oh. as videos and at the minute we're getting most of our views and our subscribers from our shorts, that's yeah. what's kind of drawing the audience in. We had two weeks in January where where we had probably like two or three views on the main video and then no views on the shorts yeah. that had been posted as videos by mistake. As soon as we realised that problem and rectified it, that's when we started getting the views in, wasn't it? So our total stats from January were about 13,000 views in total. So we had a couple of shorts go viral. I'm not sure if they are viral mm. by other people's expectations, but for us, we were definitely excited. I think one of them had six and a half thousand views, another one has four thousand views I think. That's really where we started to see subscribers coming in. At the point that we were end of January we had 28 subscribers I think if I remember correctly and now with it being middle of February we have 39 so we're still growing slowly mm. but steadily. Yeah it's a slow process and that takes me on to something that I was going to say actually to begin with which is that uh, you do not get a lot of views at the start and I know that some people are extremely lucky and their channels just take off almost straight away but for us it's really lucky that we enjoy the process because we really haven't had many views at all as of the end of January none of our main videos had surpassed 20 views. Yeah and I think that's quite hard to see when you know you're producing good content and it's mm. more that YouTube's just not putting it out there instead of it being a case of people not wanting to see it mm. but the thing that we do know with YouTube is that it values consistency. Exactly. So we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and hopefully by the time we next do a report we'll have seen like a bigger increase in traffic. Exactly. I mean, not to like toot our own horns or... <laughs> <laughs> What's the better way of saying that? I actually think that our initial content that we've put out is pretty good quality. We have had an issue with sound, mm -hmm. which we're still trying to work on now, but I have heard a lot of YouTubers who are given these kind of advice videos. They'll say things like, oh, don't worry if your first few videos don't get a lot of views because you probably won't want people to see them anyway. Like in a couple of years time, you'll look back and you'll realize that the quality wasn't there. But for us, I think we've started on the right foot and we are producing content that we're genuinely proud of 
off. I think this all comes back to us being media and marketing girlies. Like we just know what makes a good video. We're quite specific about how we want it to look. We want it to be good quality. You just can't get fixated on the numbers to begin with, I think, because it is a slow process for most people. Um, you're gonna be disheartened if all you care about is the views. So at the minute, with us being quite a new channel, I think one of the hardest things is to get engagement on our videos. So things like comments, likes, but I definitely think that posting the shorts has helped us out. Yeah. That's where we've kind of seen the most comments. Granted, we haven't had loads, but we have had comments that have replied to a question that we've asked in the video. Like we did a video about toilet paper. It was just a really silly short about which way round you like to have the toilet paper. And we got some comments to do with that. And we also got our first hate comment, which was a very big milestone. It's definitely something that we've been anticipating and we've always tried to guess what our first hate comment's gonna be. Yeah. And weirdly, it was nothing that we expected it to be. It's kind of weird in a way, but we were almost like looking forward to that first hate comment because we thought, you kind of made it, haven't you, on YouTube? Like, it's really unfortunate that that's the reality, but the haters pay the bills. Yeah, exactly. And if you are getting hate comments, then it usually means that you're getting some form of attention as well, mm -hmm. which is obviously the end goal with a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Should we actually talk about the hate comments? <laughs> yeah. So the hate comment was directed towards me and it was, oh, what was it? It was like brown hair has too much Botox or something yeah. like that. Which we were talking about this earlier and how weird it is for people to write comments in videos not addressing the actual people in the videos themselves mm. as if they're not going to read the comments. Especially with me and you having quite a small channel. Yeah. It's um, almost like they want to start a discussion like a hate discussion mm -hmm. in the comment section that's kind of withdrawn from the creator, which is just really strange because it's actually being posted beneath the creator's video for everybody to see. And the funny thing is, when I read that comment, it didn't upset me for starters. What's actually funny is that a few days ago before that comment, we were talking about how none of us have had Botox in a while and that we're both juicing Botox. So when I saw that comment, I was like, oh, what a lovely compliment yeah. because yeah. I've not had Botox probably now for over a year and you can definitely see in my frown lines but I imagine that they meant filler but I'm going to take it that they meant Botox and we were kind of talking about how we wanted to react to hate comments as well didn't we so we had a few different ideas like we were actually considering just writing thank you and then a kiss at the end which we thought was quite sassy but we eventually decided that actually we don't want our channel to be a place where hate exists in any form even if it is just kind of mild negativity mm -hmm. it's our channel we don't want it to be there so we just decided to delete the comment and that's probably what we'll do with most negative comments going forward as well yeah so something that a lot of creators mention about doing regular youtube videos is that it does bring up some insecurities mm -hmm. and we definitely noticed that for us it's insecurities that we've already had and then when you're doing the videos and you're editing obviously you spend a lot of time staring at your face and hearing yeah. your voice all these insecurities are brought to the surface our noses have always been something that from the side we've been insecure about mm -hmm. and obviously in this video setting where we're talking to each other there is going to be a lot of side angles mm -hmm. so that's definitely something that we've had to adjust to yeah and then the other thing which was probably more of a big deal for me i'd say than for you was just listening back to the sound of my voice. The first few times I just could not get my head around it because obviously we all know that the way that we think that we sound is actually very different from how other people hear us. And I think I had kind of like a, almost like an identity crisis where I was like, I didn't know that my voice sounded like that and I didn't like it and didn't feel like I had a presenter's voice or just like a very YouTube friendly voice. I mean, the good thing about YouTube though is that you don't have to be a certain way. It's exactly. not like we're presenting for the BBC you see exactly. like people of all personalities all appearances all voices can create a youtube channel and do well yeah. so but it's it's definitely a common thing that a lot of people go through when mm -hmm. they hear themselves on camera for the first time yeah and i would say as well like if this is an insecurity of yours and maybe it's holding you back from creating videos then you do get used to it really quickly like i am completely used to my voice on camera now and it's been like three videos that i've edited and i'm already fine with it so don't give in just because of 
of your voice because nobody else cares like nobody else hears it the way that you hear it another thing that i learned pretty quickly is that i needed boundaries and i don't know if you're the same but for me when we created the channel i got really excited and i just couldn't wait to start getting views and subscribers and as we said it does take a long time and i got into the habit of because i work from home i'm working on my laptop all day i would be constantly checking youtube to see if we had any new subscribers to see if any of our shorts had gone viral but it is a bad habit and it's a bit of a slippery slope like mm -hmm. i definitely had to set those same boundaries for myself i think you just get really excited especially when we actually see the subscribers and the views coming through you get a bit of like an adrenaline rush and you want to be checking constantly mm -hmm. but it's like that saying a watch pot never boils yeah it's so, so i work from home too and i started to use it as kind of like motivation to finish a project i would say to myself when the project's finished i can go on youtube and i can have a little look and then i'm not allowed to look again until my next project's finished yeah that's a good idea i only check once in the morning so when i'm checking my emails i'll also check the youtube analytics and then after that i do not let myself look because it just kind of fosters these obsessive thoughts it can be kind of discouraging as well when you're just starting out and you're not seeing the numbers go up as you would want them to I do just want to finish this video on a positive note though because I'm sure that you feel the same but I have fallen in love with this process so mm -hmm. much of creating videos and editing the content. I actually just think it's all worth it like even though we don't have a lot of subscribers right now and our videos don't really get a lot of views I just think the opportunity for me and you to get together and be silly and just have conversations that we otherwise wouldn't have. I think it gives us an excuse to hang out doesn't it? And I I think going forward the sky's the limit we have so many goals like I said we've got a whole year of content scheduled out already the aim is to be at how many subscribers do we want to be at by the end of the year I don't think we've discuss this. No. I have been manifesting quite a lot and just feeling really positive about this channel and I keep seeing the number 10,000 and I've said to you I don't know whether it's 10,000 views or 10,000 subscribers. I think mm -hmm. if it was subscribers that would be incredible but exceeding expectations for such a small channel. Yeah I mean I said to you that my aim is to double the amount of subscribers we have per month and I think yeah. that's quite a realistic goal to have and then anything more that comes out of it is just like an added bonus. So we hope that this video can be a motivator for anyone who's thinking about starting their own YouTube channel. You don't have to have everything in place. You don't have to already have a massive following on any other social media. If you think you've got content worthy of sharing, or even if you just think that you'd enjoy starting a channel without the pressure of anything coming out of it, then definitely, why not give it a go? Mm, exactly, just enjoy the process. So we hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and subscribe to our channel help us to grow past our current number of 39 subscribers and we're planning on making more videos in the future as well about our personal growth on youtube so do let us know if there's anything that you want to see all right guys we'll see you in our next video bye now i realize it was always supposed to be